I got this slide back up there again because I wanted to, to address dynamic heights and um, helmet orthometric heights and so forth. So I just basically put this back up so you can just put your mind back into dealing with the, the orthometric height. And that's that basically that curved line going up, okay? But when we talk about a dynamic height <coughs> and an orthometric height, in the National Geodetic Survey, it all starts with the same parameter. In other words, if you start with leveling, you get a leveled height difference, which is not, basically is not a helmet orthometric height, or, and it's not a dynamic height. It's a leveled height difference. And that is influenced by, as you level from one point to the next, and you're a kilometer apart, this station is under a certain geopotential model, like this black line, okay? And when, if you look at this, the very top one, the P, there's a black line for that P, okay? The very black line that goes through that P. That is where that equipotential surface goes through that P, all right? Now, if you come down this line, this red earth surface, and you come down below where the, the red line and that like ellipsoid cross over, it crosses another black line. That's another equipotential surface, okay? So when you're leveling between those two, your leveled height difference will not equal the distance between those two black lines. That's really the difference between a, a leveled height difference and a potential difference. I'll give you an equation in a second, but it's basically saying because where I am, underneath me, I have certain things going around me, geology going around me as such, that it's different when I'm over at another site. So my, the way, if I wanted to measure something, the way water flows, it's measured along these black lines, which is an equal potential surface. When you're measuring with the height difference, you're measuring along, basically along the red line, if you will, because that's your surface. And if you look at the distance between the two red lines, see that, that cube value? If you look at the distance between those, where that, that one black line and the other one go, your level difference and that distance will not be the same. And that's basically because of the way what's underneath you, this equal tensile surface, due to the gravity effect. Because you're leveling and so forth, what you're measuring is affected by gravity. If you could level and have an instrument right on the equal potential surfaces, then you wouldn't have that. So basically, it has to do with the fact that underneath you is different everywhere you level. And so, this is just a straight equation, which you did, but the bottom line is, in the adjustment, what do we do is we take and we compute a potential difference. So we take our level difference and apply this gravity information, and so this potential difference is which way water will flow. So when you do the adjustment, you end up with that. But when you're out there trying to measure with it, you don't measure a potential difference, and you don't have the gravity. All you have is a level difference. So locally, you want an orthometric height. That's just another formulation of trying to tell you that it's, a, it's an integral. But here's what's the, the important. Once you get that C value, and the C is geopotential numbers denoted with a C. Well, what you do is you compute an orthometric height by using this gravity formula. So you're taking the gravity at the surface and you're applying this value to it, and that gives you your Helmut orthometric height. So the geopotential is converted to a Helmut orthometric height. In the same way that you take that C value and compute the Helmut orthometric height, you can do the same thing and compute the dynamic height. And that's what you'll see in this right here. You got a, the normal height, but you got the dynamic height, which is the C value divided by normal gravity at 45 degrees latitude. 
And this orthometric height is the C value divided by the gravity, average gravity along the plumb line. And in the 88, we use what's called the Helmert height, orthometric height. And that gravity is, is the only difference between the Helmert orthometric height and the dynamic height. The only difference is this is used to compute the Helmert height, taking the C divided by that value. And the dynamic is, is taking the exact same C and dividing it by the normal gravity 45. That's the only difference. And if you take two geopotential numbers, they will tell you which way water flows. Now, if you take a geopotential number and divide it by the same number, a scalar, all it's doing is if it says it's here, and you divide it by a scalar, you bring it exactly down here. So the dynamic height will give you which way water flows. And on the data sheet for NGS, they give you the dynamic height. So if you want to know which way water flows, that's what you can do. And if you wanted to find the geopotential number and you wanted to validate, validate this, you could take the orthometric height, get the gravity values given on the data sheet. You can, you can do this formula, compute the C, turn around and compute the dynamic height. Yep. What is the H not your helmet height? Is that your, your <coughs> surface measure? Or your H zero? H zero. Where? You um, want to know in helmet height. Would oh, yeah, that's just your. You need an approximate. Uh, you need an approximate elevation to do the Helmert orthometric height because what you're doing is saying from where I think the geoid is up to this point, I need to, to um, compute this new gravity value. And it's, I mean, you don't need to know it very, very accurately. So that's why you do first approximation. The gravity value in the equation is The gravity value is the surface gravity. Surface. The surface gravity. And what you're doing is you're taking the surface gravity and then you're, you're using the average, that 0 0.0424 is based on an average density throughout the thing. That's all it is. So one of the way to get a more accurate, and that's called a Helmert orthometric height because it's using the Helmert gravity formula. That's why it's called a Helmert orthometric height. There's other ones. There's a Prey orthometric height, and, there's other, and they use a different gravity value. In the NVD88, we use the Helmert orthometric height. And some people would say, if you could get a better estimate of the density and gravity, you could modify that. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the average value of gravity between the monument all the way down to the geoid. That's what you're trying to get, that average gravity value. And that's just a formula that they use. And so it's an approximate formula. And it's, it's sensitive to, to the density, but not that sensitive. In other words, your heights above the geoid are very small here, so not knowing your, your density isn't going to make much of a difference. You go out into the Rocky Mountains and having a bad density average, it makes more of a difference, a bad gravity. There are issues in the NVDA heights in the Rocky Mountains of published heights changing about five or six centimeters because of a bad gravity value. Just a bad gravity. Now, the gravity values were were not a, if they were at a benchmark, you had a scaled height and position. But even there, it's a scaled value, scaled latitude, longitude, and height. And if you're in the mountains and you're scaled a little bit off and it goes in and try to get an estimate of the height from the digital terrain model, now you've got to enter an error. And so we found several of these with bad gravity estimates that changed the height by three or four centimeters. Uh, well, yeah, if you wanted to be tested. Yeah, you could, you could go through and look at it. On the day, and I actually have a data sheet, but I don't think I have it completely on this version. You just go, if you have stations along there, take the Hellman orthometric height, take the dynamic height, and look at the differences. And there'll be, there'll be small differences along the coast. Now, there may be a bias difference between them, but the relative difference will be very small in Louisiana because your your terrain is not that large. I mean, it makes a bigger difference with 
between with the with the terrain and so forth. So you'll find your height differences, but there will be a difference. Yeah, so you could do that. And it, remember, it's a model. It's all a model, but but yeah, that's what you'd want to do. And I think I think more and more people are starting to think about this dynamic height versus the orthometric height, which was our intent when we when because I argued about with people. I said. You need to put the dynamic height on the data sheet. Well, one of the reasons was the International Great Lakes Datum uses dynamic heights. They use dynamic heights because they are dealing with water levels along a, on the lake, and they need to know which way water is flowing. So they want a dynamic height. So we argued about making sure it's on the data sheet. And so now the data sheet, for, you could be in Arizona getting a data. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because this, the the sea level that you have is not exactly the geoid. Okay, it's an approximation, yes, but it's not. At any one time, it is not. Well, at any one, at, at some time, it probably is on the true geoid. <laughs> at some time, I would say, because it's moving, so it has to be somewhere, sometime. But most times, it is not at that. So, yeah, you'll see differences. And this is what the Great Lakes people wanted because they go from U.S. to Canada, and the system was in NVD88 and the IGLD because we, we, we did one adjustment. <coughs> Remember, we did one adjustment, got the geopotential number, then computed dynamic heights and orthometric heights. But they want to be able to go out in the middle of the Great Lakes and get the dynamic height. So they have to use models to get to that. The IGLD, the International Great Lakes, they are updating their datum also. I think it's going to be called the 2025 because they take a um, seven-year data set to do something, but and thing. But it'll be ID. It'll be done in 2025, but mean will be 2022. But anyways, they use the water level information, and NGS is looking at their geo their geopotential reference frame and doing the same thing. But on the lakes, that reference frame there'll be a difference between what they have from the nation and what they have there. And they're looking to say, like the Great Lakes should be an equal potential surface. But like the tides, you got wind and waves and you got everything else, so how close the reality is. And they're doing studies with that. Dan Roman uh, personally is looking into doing that. 